Hi, and this is the top 10 fiddly fig problems and how to treat them. I'm Claire Aiken with the Fiddly Fig Plant Resource Center, and today I'm going to walk you through the most common problems from our Fiddly Fig Facebook group and give you my best advice on how to treat them. So I hope this webinar is really helpful for you, and I hope it kind of simplifies some of the problems that you're having because I know they can be really frustrating if there's something wrong with your plant and you're not sure what to do about it. So I'll start out by giving you a little bit of background. Welcome to the Fiddle Leaf Egg Plant Resource Center. We have tons of resources, blog posts, webinars. We have a suite of products that are just for fiddle leaf fig plants. And we have a lot of new products that are designed to treat the problems that fiddle leaf figs have. And so you can shop our store, you can um, look at our different products, and we probably have a specific product for you that'll help your plant grow in the future. We also have a book and the fiddle leaf fig expert course. So check out the links below for those resources. So I just want to give you a little background in my story. Um, so by trade, I'm a writer, but I'm also a gardener and a houseplant lover. So I grew up with my grandma who had a fiddle leaf fig back in the 1970s. And so she was one of the first fiddle leaf fig aficionados, which is so cool. And she just loved houseplants. She taught me everything I know about houseplants. But then my mom taught me everything I know about outdoor gardening and roses. And so I have a beautiful rose garden and I love roses and gardening in general. And so those are really my passions. And I have two little girls you can see and a wonderful husband. Um, so I'm also have become over the years a fertilizer specialist. And so we've done a lot of work developing different fertilizers that really help your plants with the specific things you want your plant to do. So we have a product that helps uh, to help a propagated cutting to grow roots. We have a product that helps a fiddle leaf fig to grow faster. We have a product that helps treat root rot and fiddle leaf figs. So depending on the specific issue you're facing or the specific thing that you're looking for, we probably have a product for you. And it's been my passion and my mission to create products that really work to get our plants to um, have you know, a robust growth and to look beautiful and to make us into confident growers. And so I'm a lecturer at UCLA Extension and it's my goal to help simplify the content out there for growing houseplants and to help you have a more satisfying and fulfilling relationship with your plant. So I created the Fiddle Leaf Fig Resource Center because I believe in the power of houseplants. I really think that something special happens when we learn over the years how to take care of a plant properly and you grow these plants over years or even over generations. I have two spider plants from my grandma that are, you know, decades and decades old. And so it's such a powerful experience to care for and to grow a plant. And I really want to help share my passion. And so when I first started growing houseplants, you know, besides my grandmother's advice and my mom's advice, there's not a lot of good information online. A lot of the information can be very frustrating and very confusing. So I wanted to create a resource center that was simple and that gave you actionable advice to solve your problems. And so that's my goal. So you can shop our store. I'll leave a link below. And if you buy more than one product, you can save 25% on everything you buy. If you buy two or more, you can save 25%. So check it out. We have the plant food. We have the root rot treatment. We have a leaf shine product. We have fiddle leaf fig potting soil. Um, so we have all of these different options for you. So I hope you enjoy shopping. So houseplants are mysterious and wonderful. This is the IKEA plant video where on the left they took a plant and they had people only say negative words to it and give negative thoughts to it. And on the right is a very similar plant in the same growing conditions where they had people say positive things to it and give it love. And you can tell just the amazing difference that is in the growth and the health of these plants based on our intentions toward them. And so I really believe that there's a lot more going on with houseplants than what meets the eye or what you may believe. And when you do have a thriving houseplant, it just is a, a really symbiotic relationship where your plant is giving you oxygen and beauty and life and you're giving your plant love and compassion and care. And so I really believe in the symbiotic nature of our relationship with houseplants. So let's answer some of the starter questions. So are fiddly figs really hard to grow? There's a lot of information online that says they're hard to grow. And if you've had one die on you, um, you know, you probably agree with this. And I, you know, I'm, I'm not perfect either. I have had fiddly figs die on me. I have one that's struggling right now. And so they can be a little bit difficult to grow, but they're not the hardest houseplant to grow. Um, and so I just want to kind of reframe your opinion too. You know, they, they can be finicky, but if you give them the right environment, they really will grow quickly, easily, and beautifully for you. The problem is there's a lot of conflicting advice online. There's houseplant gurus out there that are really trying to confuse you and overcomplicate the process. 
And if you look at a fiddle leaf fig outside, I have one on my patio. I live in San Diego. It's huge. It's outgrown its base. It's growing through my pergola up towards the sun. So if you give them sunlight and, um, you know, don't overwater them, they are relatively easy compared to a lot of other houseplants. So what we're going to cover today is the top 10 fiddle leaf fig problems with photos and how to troubleshoot them. And so we got these by asking our Facebook group. We have about 15 to 20,000 people in our Facebook group that are all fiddle leaf fig lovers. So please join us there if you're not already there. And we did a poll of what are the problems you're having and these were the top 10 problems. So the first problem is, you know, basically deciding how to water your fiddle leaf fig. Now they don't need a lot of water. Um, and so what's most important when you first get a fiddle leaf fig is not to overwater it. And that is critical to its health. You're much better off underwatering it than overwatering it. But the problem is that how much water my plant needs and how much water your plant needs is different. So it depends on the size of your container. It depends on the size of your plant. It depends on how large your drainage holes are, how dry your environment is, and most importantly, the growing medium or the soil that your plant is in affects how much water will be retained. And so what I really recommend if you're having problems watering your plant and you think you may be under or over watering, the first thing to do is to get a soil meter. And so we sell a guaranteed soil meter that is made directly for fiddly figs and it has instructions of exactly how to use it for a fiddly fig. You can click the link below to buy one of those and um, they're really well made and they're beautiful. And what you do is you stick it into the soil two to three inches down about halfway between the trunk of the plant and the um, side of the plant um, of the container about two to three inches down and you're looking for a number four or less before you water and so if you're still getting between four and ten a four five six seven eight nine or ten it means it's too wet and you should wait to water it if it's less than a four then it means maybe you waited a couple days too long so go ahead and water it today and so that's the first thing I would recommend the next thing I would recommend is if you feel like you're using a moisture meter on a regular basis and your plant is staying too wet, which I have a lot of plants that do this. I have fiddly figs that I only water every three weeks and they're doing great, but it's because the drainage holes in the container are not that big and the soil is really, really um, retaining a lot of moisture. And so if you have a plant in that condition, it means probably that your soil is a little bit too um, moist and that you may want to think about switching to a lighter or a faster draining soil. And so we make a premium fiddle leaf fig potting soil that is very well aerated and very fast draining that you can switch to if you prefer that your plant will dry out quicker and give you less risk of root rot. So let's talk about um, Question number two, which is why are new leaves growing out with holes or with red spots? And so this is a question we get all the time. And so you see this picture here has little red spots on the new leaves. So congratulations if you have new growth on your plant. That means that your plant is healthy. That means that it's doing well, that it doesn't have a big disease, and that you know it has enough light and enough nutrients. So that's a great sign. The problem is these little red spots. Well, <laughs> rest assured they're completely normal. So you don't need to worry about these red spots. They're edema. And what it means is your plant got a a little bit overwatered and some of the cells burst as it was having a growth spurt. There's no reason to cut back on watering. You actually do want to keep your plant moist during a growth spurt. Otherwise, you could stunt the growth of new leaves. So just don't worry about the red spots. They will completely fade as your leaf matures. On the other leaf here, you see a hole, and that is most likely an insect hole. The insects love new growth. And so there's two things that happen with this delicate new growth that I see. One is that it can freeze. So if you have a plant that's outdoors, you can see sometimes the new growth will be shriveled or have holes in it, and it will freeze when the larger, more mature leaves do not freeze. And so they are more susceptible to frost, and they're also very susceptible to insects. So the rest of your plant may be protecting itself from insects, but the new leaf is just too delicious for those insects. And so I would use our uh, leaf armor spray and spray down this new foliage uh, because we have a spray that protects against bacteria against fungus and against all insects and so it's just a good time to spray down your plant if it's having a growth spurt to protect the new growth from these hungry critters that just love munching on this new growth. So number three to repot or not to repot. So there's a lot of you know worry about root shock when you repot your plant. I don't really worry about it too much. I repot all of my plants about once a year. Um, if you do it gently and you're putting it into a slightly larger container and you're not doing too much trauma to your plant, 
you're not going to have, you know, that much of a problem. Where you see problems is if you repot and change the location of your plant at the same time, they really don't like to be moved. And so I recommend if you do repot, at least leave it in the same location so it gets the same light and the same growing conditions. Um, and that will alleviate half the battle. If you are going to repot your plant, I recommend, um, you know, just going up about, you know, two to four inches in diameter of your pot, putting a nice, uh, well aerated, fast draining soil around it, and then just giving it a chance to kind of recover for a week or two before you do anything drastic to it, before you do any pruning or any heavy fertilizer or anything like that. Um, and so that's kind of my recommendation. When you repot, you want to think about why you're repotting. So certainly if you have a problem, like you have root rot or um, you know, your plant is root bound and the roots are coming up out of the pot or if you lift it out of the pot and you can see roots, you know, that's when you want to repot. But if your plant is the size that you would like it to be and it's healthy, there's no real reason that you have to repot. You could always do what is called top dressing where you take the top soil and replace it with fresh soil. And as long as you're fertilizing your plant with our fiddly fig plant food on a regular basis, it's getting all the nutrients that it needs. So it actually doesn't even need soil to grow. So you could leave it in the same pot even if it is root bound and as long as you're fertilizing it, it will continue to grow and to be healthy. But if it's the size that you want, I would say just leave it um, as long as it looks healthy. So the fourth question we get is basically a question about root rot. So there's two types, two main types of root rot. There's actually several different types, um, but basically bacterial root rot and fungal root rot. And so fungal root rot um, is a little bit different. Bacterial is a little bit harder to treat. And so I'll walk through how to distinguish, but at the end of the day, the reality is that it doesn't really matter which root rot your plant has. If your plant has uh, basically brown spots or black spots, or if it's dropping leaves, that means that it has root rot and that you need to treat it immediately. And we have a root rot treatment that treats both bacterial and fungal root rot. Um, and so I recommend doing that. Another type of root rot that can happen is just a root rot from drowning the roots themselves. So if, you're, if your roots are sitting in water, they literally can drown and be damaged by the water logging. Um, and so that's a physical root rot. And so it doesn't necessarily matter, you know, the mechanism of the rot. Um, but here you can see this is a bacterial infection. The spots tend to be lighter brown. They tend to be less um, concentrated on the very base of the stem, more spread out as like polka dots or Dalmatian spots on the plant. Whereas a, um, a fungal root rot actually has black spots that will spread. It'll, it'll be fewer spots, but larger spots. They really start at the base of the leaf and spread and cause more significant leaf drop. So you want to look out for these. These can kill your plant in a hurry. Root rots you know, it's caused by too much water, not enough drainage, but also not enough light and generally a sick plant. And so if you get your plant from one of the large box growers like Home Depot or Costco, they can be a little bit prone to root rot. Um, and so just watch out. You may want to supplement them with our root rot treatment in the beginning until they adjust and kind of get used to your house and your growing conditions until they start to look like they're doing really well on their own. So number five, how to remove damaged leaves and prune branches without shocking the plant. So it is true that you could put your plant into shock if you do too much pruning all at once. You know, plants do not like to be cut. As soon as you cut a fiddle leaf fig, they will release this kind of white sticky sap. And so I recommend never pruning more than 10% of the leaves at once. The reason that you want to prune is, first of all, if your plant has damaged leaves. In that case, I would cut off the worst 10% of leaves and leave the rest. You just don't want to go over that or your plant basically doesn't have enough resources to do photosynthesis and grow itself back to health. The other reason you might want to prune is because you want to propagate. In this case, I really recommend doing the, um, the newest growth. That has the most kind of potential to put out new roots and to be a healthy propagation. We are working on a propagation promoter. One of the things that is unique to fiddly figs is they are a little bit hard to propagate and they take a long time. It can take six to eight weeks for them to propagate and put out new roots. And so we're working on a propagation promoter hormone that also has nutrients that can help shorten that time and increase your success of propagation because it keeps bacteria from growing in the water that you place your cutting in. So look out for that. It's going to be out around um, mid-2020. So check it out. Um, as soon as it's ready, it's really going to shorten the time and improve your chances of success. So six, 
how to start off on the right foot with a new planting. And so what I would say here, or sorry, with a new fiddle leaf fig. So what I would say here is, you know, when you get your plant home, the important thing to realize is these plants are grown in very, very bright and sunny conditions. And so the growers grow them in 50% of full sun. That means they're in screened greenhouses that have 65% humidity and about 50% of full sunlight. So when you pull them into your house, they're going down drastically in the amount of light they're getting and the amount of humidity that they're getting. So what I would say, you know, these plants can certainly adapt to conditions, but it takes them time to adapt. It takes a month or you know six weeks for them to adapt so when you bring your fiddly fig home put it in the sunniest location possible even if that's not the location it's going to be in the long run I have fiddly figs in my house that are in dark spots but it took me a while to get them there so put it in the sunniest location as it adjusts and then move it to a darker location if you must and then the other thing I would say is try our leaf armor when you first get your plant home. The first reason is because there could be pests on your plant. The second reason is because our leaf armor spray protects your plant against bacterial and fungal root rot. And the third is that it actually helps your plant to retain moisture. And so it gives kind of a moisture barrier, like wearing chapstick. And so when these plants go from 65% humidity in the growing conditions to whatever your humidity is in your home, it's probably, you know, 40 to 50%. Um, if it's less than that, you may even want to use a humidifier. Um, but this can help your plant retain its own moisture and help it be less susceptible to those kind of lower humidity conditions as it adapts. Seven, how to get rid of spider mites and gnats. So um, two kind of different pests or any insects that come to your plants. The first thing I recommend is our leaf armor spray. So it'll kill any insects and it will protect against bacteria and fungus. And it also kind of gives that um, you know moisture barrier for your plant. And so that's the first thing. The second thing is to look at the overall health of your plant because fiddle leaf figs with mature leaves are very resistant to any kind of pests. And so if you are having a plant that's being eaten alive by pests, that typically means that either, you know, there's something wrong with your plant or it's not in the best health, or you have an infested plant nearby that you should get rid of. Um, so once you spray it with a leaf armor, give it a couple of, you know, weeks to try to recover from that. If you're still having a problem, address the underlying problem with your plant. It could be overwatering. It could be lack of light. It could be lack of nutrients. You can also try neem oil, which is a natural gardening uh, spray, and you could spray that all over your plant. It does have a little bit of a smell, so um, you know you may want to air out your house well if you're doing that, um, but that's kind of the best way to get rid of spider mites. And then for gnats, Typically we see gnats if your soil is too wet and so make sure you have a really well draining aerated soil and that it's not too wet. Um, if you're seeing a lot of gnats I would let your plant dry out more between waterings so that um, that soil dries up and the gnats can't lay their eggs in it. So when is it is time to separate fiddle leaf fig trunks and stems? So a lot of times people get fiddle leaf figs and they will be multiple plants in the same container, and so people will want to separate them to make two plants. There is two schools of thought on this, you know, in, in one way you're getting two plants out of one. In another way, I'm kind of against this. The reason is there's going to be a lot of root growth where these roots have grown together, and also it just changes the aesthetic of your plant. I kind of like a fuller plant, and so if you have two or three or even four plants in one container, I think it looks awesome. It'll raise the relative humidity for each of the plants and keep them stronger and growing better together. If you do separate them, you are gonna cause some damage to the roots and some shock to your plants. So my best advice is to do it really gently and to do it as soon as possible because as they kind of sit together and as they grow together, the roots are only gonna get more and more intertwined. So do it at your own risk. Consider just you know propagating your plant or buying another plant um, before you separate them because you know then you're left with two tall skinny fiddle leaf figs that aren't as resilient as they were together. Number nine, so why are leaves sprouting at the bottom instead of the top? You know, plants just kind of grow wherever they grow. We can't force them to put out leaves right where we want, but the best advice I have for this is to cut off the growth where you don't want it. And so both of these examples, you could cut off this growth and propagate it and create a new plant um, and then do some notching. So notching is using a sharp knife to cut a small slit where you want the growth activity to happen. So if you want this plant to grow towards the top, you could cut off the very top of the plant and hope that it kind of grows back 
Um, or you could do some notching towards the top of the plant to get some activity there. Make sure you're fertilizing it really well. Make sure that you're giving it some, um, you know, all of the treatments and that it's generally in good health. Notch it where you want the growth and as painful as it is, it is you just got to cut off the growth that you don't want. Um, but you could propagate it if, it if it has enough of a stem that you could put the stem underwater, you could try propagating it. Number 10, how to save a plant that drop, has dropped most of its leaves. And so, you know, the problem with this is that if your plant has dropped all of its leaves or most of its leaves, it faced a huge problem to cause it to do that, right? So it had terrible drainage, it got root rot, it didn't get enough light, um, whatever it is. And so the only way you're going to save your plant is if you've corrected those underlying conditions. So say that you have, in you know, most cases... Um, I would start over with a new plant just because honestly it's so frustrating to try to grow a plant back that has had such a problem like this and if you haven't corrected the underlying conditions you're not going to be able to change the course and it's just going to be kind of a sad experience. So I recommend starting with a new plant if you can. If you can't try to move your plant outside. If you live in a climate where your plant could do okay outside. So I say, um, you know, as long as your temperatures are between, you know, 50 degrees and 95 degrees, um, your plant could do okay outside. Make sure that it's not in full sun. I would put it in shade under a pergola with part sun, um, a shade room, things like that are great areas. Fiddly figs love to be outside if you don't live in a climate that is too cold or too hot. So the best way is to put it outside, kind of forget about it, don't water it too much, still fertilize it, and see what happens. Um, and so that's my best advice there. And there's an article on our site about a fiddly fig recovery where I put my sick plant outside and now it's, it's I think it's like 15 feet tall and it's doing great. So that's kind of my best advice there. So if you want to learn more, the best way to learn more is to join our Facebook group. We have over 15,000 people in there. A lot of the people are incredible experts that can look at your pictures and give their expertise. So click the link below to join our Facebook group and post photos of your plants there. You can also buy the Fiddly Fig Expert book, and that will give you a lot of information on tips and tricks, pruning, propagation, cleaning, and more. And then shop our store. You know, we have so many products that are designed to help to improve the health of your plant. And so if you're having problems like root rot or soil that's not draining, we have a root rot treatment. We have a soil that will drain better. We have a moisture meter. So all of our products are designed to help your plant to address the top problems that we see. And if you have a problem that we haven't addressed, let me know and we can see if we can create a product to solve that. And then there's the Fiddly Fig course. And so I would like to invite you, this special deal for everyone watching this webinar, the Fiddly Fig course is normally $49, but you can get free lifetime access by clicking the link below. So it's our special gift to, you, gift to you. It's an online video course, and I think you'll really like it. It has a lot of troubleshooting tips and tricks. And so click below, you can get lifetime access, and I hope you really enjoy it. If you want to shop our products, if you buy more than one, uh, or more than two, sorry, you can save 25% on everything. So if you buy at least two products in your Amazon cart, we have a coupon for you below where you can save 25% on everything for your fiddly fig. I hope you enjoy shopping. So thank you so much for joining us. Please ask a question in the chat box, share this webinar on Facebook or Pinterest or Instagram, and follow us on social media. I hope this was helpful, and thank you so much for joining us.